Hey there, sign of Virgo. My name is Kim and I'll do your reading for the next 72 hours. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for your likes, your comments, subscribe, shares. Please do subscribe if you haven't and you'll be notified of my future readings. So let's get started. Let's call in divine white light to surround us as we do this reading for Virgo and angels, spirit guides, higher self, um, that want to give information for Virgo's highest good only. And let's start. We're going to start with the archetype deck and get a couple of these cards. See where it goes from there. And then I'm going to do the past to future spread. It's not really a spread. It's just kind of a linear line <laughs> of cards. But um, I like it better than the Celtic cross. So... Virgo. See the threshold on the split, maybe something that you are stepping into, like a new experience. All right. <coughs> Two cards for Virgo. Cairo and the ring. There's something on the card. Okay, and then on the bottom of the deck we have the offering. This is when you offer something up and you get something in return. So it's like letting go of something in order to make room for something else. All right, so Cairo, let me look this up. Cairo though is about synchronicities. I think it goes like this, doesn't it? So you can see the eye a little bit better. So it's about synchronicities, um, let's see. If I can get to it. Yeah, mythic time and synchronicities. This is kind of like the magical part in life. The, the things, all it's almost like all things magical with the Cairo. Um, this card from the book says that it may be felt as time standing still slow motion or losing track of time on a walk or in a lovely conversation. And in that sense, this card represents the bond between mythic time or mythic um, realms and the reality, the earth realm here. So it's like the, how they combine. So it's like, a, a, it's almost like a world without, a dimension without time, let's say. And I definitely think it's because um, the spiritual side is influencing your serendipities that are happening. So seeing repeating numbers, having signs, meeting people in the right places, the right time, just serendipitous events. And I think that, yeah, that might be from like your higher self um, or your spirit guides or your angels, I guess. So this is all about patience. This card reminds me of temperance in the sense that there is divine timing at play. In fact, you will be encouraged to know that something is going to happen on divine timing if you start seeing the synchronicities and that lets you know that you're aligning with your higher self, which is your highest good. When light, this card is alignment, ease in decisions and actions. And when dark, this card is your fighting against time. Hmm. All right. It says the word evil comes from the root unripe. Consider that everything has a time of ripeness, and when it becomes a nourishing fruit, sweet to the li sweet to the lips, then it's considered ripe. Hmm. Okay. Now the ring. Let's move on. Let's move on. The ring. This is about, I think this is about infinite love. Um, this could be about really receiving a ring. I know it says that in there too. Like as a gift. Literally a ring. Or this is like the Wheel of Fortune card. It's the infinite, the wheel, the connection between everything. And this is about connection and synchronicities too. So in a sense, these cards are just... Um, almost synchronistic in the fact that they came out together for you. So it says beginnings and endings fall by the wayside as we realize that this is all an infinite journey. Things go on all the time, never ending story. 
This is about connectedness, humility, and sacred cycles. I'm almost getting the, the, the numerology feel for this too, like the pinnacles and the different cycles we have in life. If this is dark, we have unconscious repetition and starving for connection, which means, you know, that the karmic cycle that you're playing out is repeating. It's on repeat. And that's usually, I mean, that happens when a lesson isn't fully integrated and, um, in a sense, you know, out of denial and corrected, turned to light. All right. Or it's a ring, like I said, or it's a ring. There's that. That. Let's see. Let's get. I'm gonna get this deck. Let's get the wisdom from the Oracle deck today. We will get this for Virgo. Next 72 hours. New life on the split. Two very, very different cards. Hmm, let's get one more. Give something a rest. Give something a rest. Okay, so Virgo, there, there is somebody, this energy can be reversed or it could be your energy. Five is all about changes, right? It's the number of change. Sometimes it represents conflict, only in the sense that change is usually hard for us to deal with, um, especially if you're like a fixed sign. Orphaned means somebody or yourself that doesn't feel like they're fitting in. There's something that they feel maybe lacking or they're in the wrong group, like needing to find your soul tribe. I have to do with that. Some people feel like that within their own families. So, all right, the ring <clears throat> and Cairo. We have in the middle, time for a nap. And then that, this one relates really well with yin. Because yin is about the feminine energy of waiting for things to like passively come to you. And it's when you've already put in the work and you're in that receiving mode from the law of attraction. And this is, it's, it's guaranteed that you're going to receive, you know, what, what you're wanting. It's just saying, here, stay still for a minute and go inside. Listen to your gut, your instincts. Give something a rest with this time for a nap. And, and it could be like your your actions here with waiting to receive, be open to receiving. Take a rest. Time for a nap. This could also indicate a little bit more self-care is needed. All right, so we're going to move on. Let's move on. From there, we're going to take a look at the tarot. And we are going to see, Virgo, what's going to happen. Um, past and then present and future and in this line of cards you decide which one is you know very past <laughs> or which which card represents going into the present that is all based on your timeline Whoop. <laughs> gosh I almost lost the whole deck all right so Virgo your card on the bottom the hermit all right, so the past section. I figured that card was going to come out. Okay, that's too many. Let's start with this group right now. We will pull extra cards if we need to. We've got the Six of Wands, which, of course, you know, is your vic victory, victory in a situation. Let's start from the, I'll start from here though. Wow. Okay. Okie dokie. So, Knight of Cups, Five of Wands, Ace of Pentacles, Two of Wands, Judgment, and the Six of Wands. So, we could be having a young adult that is a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. We could have a Sagittarius with us. 
we could have an earth sign too. When I see ace of pentacles, I usually think of earth signs or whatever, you know, um, whatever it's representing. So Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn could be yourself. Knight of Cups. This is about an offer that came in and this might be a past um, you know, cause it's in, it's kind of, this is definitely the past, the starting of the past. So it could be an offer that, you know, of love that you received either from a person regarding like a job or, um, something to do with an offer of love from somebody else. Could have to do with career though. I really see career in this so this offer that you got in the past, it led to some conflict, some disagreements. Um, the five of wands is usually about competition, like others competing almost for the same thing. So if this is talking about a job, then it's about people competing for the same thing. Or um, if this is about a love interest, people competing for the same love interest. So you take it how your story resonates. Then we have Ace of Pentacles coming in. Looks like it's from past, maybe present um, tense. This is about a new opportunity. It's a pathway that's you know given to you by the universe to step through. And once you step through this pathway, you will find an opportunity of abundance, of your prosperity, prosperous times. It's significant um, money, basically, when you see Ace of Pentacles. And there's the pathway there. And everything looks green. Everything's growing just great on this path. It will take some focus. So we have uh, the Two of Wands being very focused. Very focused, focused on what you're wanting and and the two of wands, it can mean a few things. So it can mean a new job, like a job change. It can mean somebody being at a distance from you. You see him looking at the uh, world card, or <laughs> world card, the world, the globe. Um, so the two of wands can be that. Or the way I usually think of it is manifesting something so whatever it is you're manifesting I think it has to do with these pentacles you just have have a really good focus and um, remember that your thoughts have to attract what you're desiring so they need to line up with it so if you find yourself thinking negatively you don't really want that energy because it's going to attract the same thing just take a time out do something like cleaning something to get your vibration back up to where you're comfortable and thinking about positive thoughts again that is what you will attract judgment this is about i look at this card and i think second chances because that is what you get whenever forgiveness is worked into the equation. Whether it's forgiveness of other people or forgiveness of yourself um, for something, it, it clears out negativity from our bodies. So when we have um, holding on to resentments or anger, past fights, we are just going to make ourselves sick, really, because it leads to dis-ease. So this judgment is here, and I really feel it's about giving a second chance. Maybe, and no, I don't mean like a. I don't mean necessarily that a relationship needs a second chance. You don't have to put up with anything when you get the judgment card. You simply forgive mainly for yourself and the other person to move on without any negative effects lingering on. So then we have the six of wands. Really great because this card represents your victory. Um, public recognition from others, being put on a pedestal, um, riding your high horse on your high horse, because that's what you can do in this position. So this is really good. This is about getting recognition for all the hard work that you put in. And it's very much like the yin energy. So it's almost like it's moving to this so this is a victory. Maybe you're beating out some kind of karmic cycle that needed ending. Virgo, sorry right. about that break there. These were your tea leaves. Um, star, guaranteed success. Fox, shrewdness and resourcefulness, especially in business. Scales, keep your life in balance. Needle and thread, a sincere wish will be granted. And torch, spiritual development and enlightenment. 
Thanks.